Welcome to Swinger University, your horizontal enrichment program. Bringing you sexy lessons for sexy fun. Here are your hosts, Ed and Phoebe. Hi, this is Ed. Today, we are talking about cunnilingus. Oh my. Or pleasuring your lady friends with your mouth. Lady friends. Much like our fellatio episode, it's more than your mouth, but it's mostly about the tongue and lips and what you can do with them to make her feel good. <sighs> Many women love cunnilingus because it focuses heavily on stimulating the clitoris and therefore is more likely to make her orgasm. Statistics. Between 70 and 80% of women need clitoral stimulation to climax. Yet many women feel self-conscious about receiving it. Mm-hmm. It's a very intimate act. Mm -hmm. His face is mm. down in your parts. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> why do you do it? Oh, golly, I have no idea. For her, there's this vulnerability. It's, it's a little intimidating. You are self-conscious about it, and I'm not going to relay this story, Phoebe's going to tell her story about it, but mm -hmm. I empathize with her. I understand what she's talking about. Growing up, going to school, a parochial school, wearing the uniform, little plaid skirt, knee highs, socks, all that stuff. Tell me more. White shirt, classic Catholic girls oh, yeah. outfit. Right. Phoebe is a Catholic girl in mm. many respects. <laughs> My brain was pretty well washed with, you know, do's and don'ts and what's right and wrong and all that stuff, apparently, according to that mindset. I didn't know a whole lot about my body. And I, I knew what felt good by makeshift dildos and um, writing my, the couch cushion down in my basement, the, the little ribbing, what do they call that? Little, the cording. The cording. The edge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, that felt good. Of course, I covered it with a towel or pillowcase. But I never really touched myself. So I wasn't familiar with my parts. I never looked down there. And so I graduate. i out on my own. I meet up with this man who's about 10 years my senior. And he, we get intimate, and he decides he wants to go down on me. And I'm like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Why? That's weird. It was weird. It was like foreign to me had no idea this was a thing had no clue what oral sex was none tragic absolutely none tragic. i thought it was the weirdest thing ever and giving oral sex i thought was the weirdest thing ever i had to really work at training my brain to think that it wasn't disgusting now you just Oh, yeah. Work it. Oh, yeah. All those thoughts are gone now. So I had been thoroughly programmed for something completely different than where I am today. <laughs> so the, the oral sex aspect of it also, while I overcame the my brain thinking this is disgusting for you know and now this is pleasurable it was still a very vulnerable act for me and uncomfortable for me to express pleasure just to lay back and express pleasure and be vulnerable and not have to be active in 
that role of sexual interaction. Right. So, I mean, I was, maybe that was also part of programming was you please the man or it's your job to be a caretaker. You're the one to be the person to, to do everything. Right. So to be vulnerable, lay back and just accept. Just take it, baby. (laughs) That. Just take it. Right. So. So, yeah, it's been a process. It has been a process. Now, now, there's also some self-consciousness in terms of vaginal health, odor. There's this preconceived notion that I think a lot of women have that, like, am I fresh? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole market for products. Right. You see the commercials all the time, if you see commercials anymore, Mm -hmm. about douching and right vaginal so, sprays so and... you've been in the car all day you've been at the amusement park or something or you're on a bike ride and all of a sudden your guy wants to whip your pants down in the cornfield after you've been on a bike for two hours sweating and like go down on you you're like what are you crazy i probably smell but no he loved it uh-huh no it's good that way so it's a getting comfortable with the process. fact <laughs> it's a what? It's a self cleaning process. <laughs> but still, it's like you're like, wait, I've been sweating for two hours down there. I I get it. Everybody's heard of ball sweat. I mean, it's a thing. So yeah, I get the self consciousness of right. it. But you can't be self conscious. I get the two hour bike ride. Right. And then sex, although, you know, if, if that's your thing and you're, and it's not bad, then go for it. Right. But I understand. Right. So there's another aspect to this besides the whole vulnerability and the self-consciousness. There's trust, right? Mm-hmm. This guy has teeth and lips. Mm. In one of your most sensitive and intimate places. Teeth and lips. I can imagine it's a lot like when a woman starts to go to town on your balls. Mm. Yes. It's it's a little nerve-wracking. I know. I think you're still nervous about that. Oh, I'm very nervous about that. I know. You still haven't gotten comfortable. (laughs) I had to shift. He just just bounced in his chair. I had to adjust myself. (laughs) It is. It's oh so my I God. get it. You're so funny. And for in my experience, especially with you, that just attacking the clit, I mean mm-hmm. going straight towards it. Mm-hmm. It's not comfortable. For me, no. It's, it's like pins and needles. Yes, it's extremely sensitive for me. You got to warm it up a little yes. bit. Yes. Mhm. It's almost I I think of it as desensitizing it gently. Yeah, in the most delicate and right sexual way of desensitizing it. But right. yeah, you're right. You kind of warm up to it. Mm-hmm. You, you ex- probably what it is is you're you're bringing more blood flow to it, and so the nerves are buffered a little bit by the inflamed tissue. But mm. Ooh. we're getting early science. What's that? Inflamed (laughs) tissue. (laughs) It's intimate. Mm -hmm. The the woman is being pleasured. The man is giving pleasure with no stimulation on his part. Mm -hmm. It's a very giving, intimate act. You are like up in it. (laughs) With your face. (laughs) I mean... That's pretty intimate. So this is, we're still in the why do it. Vulnerability, trust, intimacy. And then number four is power. Yes. And this is one of the aspects that I really like. And that's Mm -hmm. this sense of control over her body. Ed gets off on this. And pleasuring her. Mm -hmm. It's... It's kind of hot to make a woman squirm around on your face. Mm -hmm. 
it's very sexy. It gets very competitive during 69. Uh Uh-huh. It's a little bit of a tug of war. Uh Uh-huh. But Ed always wins. I always, I can't, I can't keep up with that tug of war. Mm. Ed whips out like some special technique and I'm like, oh God, I can't focus right now. Magic. Magic mouth tricks. (laughs) The other thing that's really good about it is there's less focus on penetration. There's more focus on the clitoris. So really, you're, you're concentrating on what is making her feel good. Mm-hmm. Penetration is a little bit of a reciprocal act, right? Mm-hmm. You're feeling good. She's feeling good, maybe. <laughs> you don't know. Maybe. You hope she is. <laughs> but it starts to feel really good, and sometimes you kind of forget about what she's feeling, and that's not so good. Well, well, but well. with oral sex, it's all about her with a focus on the clitoris Mm -hmm. and there's there's a secret about the clitoris that we're going to get into if you don't know Mm -hmm. and as we've read and as we said in the statistics focusing on the clitoris is more likely to make her orgasm which is great right risks Like all sexual activity, there are risks of oral transmission, of STIs, and HIV. So if you get an STI from oral sex, it's partly because you also had vaginal or anal sex. And it would be because of factors like very poor oral health. Maybe you have some sores in your mouth. You pre-ejaculate or ejaculate from an infected partner, you've got contact with menstrual blood or the presence of other STIs. So as your dentist likes to tell you, (laughs) brush and floss regularly (laughs) so that you don't get an STI when you're giving oral sex. Yes. So if your gums are healthy, they can protect you from an STI. I'm not kidding you. As well as gingivitis. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and halitosis. It's all good. In addition, your risk of getting HIV from anal or vaginal sex is much higher, so oral sex is a little bit safer. And that's why we found that most swingers don't resort to dental dams right. and condoms for oral sex, besides right. the fact that, that latex tastes terrible. Oh, yeah. It's a lower risk. Mm-hmm. Um, And from what I understand from the statistics, please check with your doctor. We are not medical professionals, but significantly lower risks. Right. And you can find those statistics on the CDC. They have great information. Numbers, science. Yes. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. The basics. Every vagina is different. Yes, they are. And this is one of the best parts. Yeah. Looks. So much variety. Lips, hair, clitoris. All beautiful and interesting to look at. Never used to think that until you showed me that book of the oh, photographer. Yeah. Huh? Yes. The book. The guy who yeah, yeah. photographed all those people and took molds. Yes. Of their um, impressions mm-hmm. of. All their flowers. Their vulva. Yeah, and I think the book was actually called Volva or something like that. Oh, yeah, I wish I, yeah. It, what's great about it, and so a lot of women are self-conscious about what their vagina looks like. And a lot. Why okay. is that, Ed? Well, because porn mm-hmm. has these neatly trimmed little labia. Now, what the dirty truth is... They were either born that way or they paid a surgeon to crop them into what they thought was the ideal. And I got to tell you, it really disturbs me that women are chopping up their vaginas to appeal to some aesthetic someplace because 
I can tell you, at least from my perspective, I've never met an ugly vagina. Yeah. They're all beautiful. Labia. Vulva. Small Vulva. lips, big lips, whatever. Raggedy lips. Nice, juicy, <laughs> puffy lips. I know. It's all good. It's fascinating. It, it's fascinating, and they all feel good. So, what the hell is your problem? Why, why <laughs> are you messing with something? I I know it's 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 weird how media and 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 porn will will show you the perfect or what what we think is perfect or sure. normal, and in the real world, honestly, it's it's not. In fact. I have seen the largest variety of cock in my life by being a swinger. Yeah. Had no clue. The whole range. I've been blessed with men that have had very similar size, girth, and length penises. I don't know how. Maybe I'm the... I don't know. You're just a cock magnet, honey. I got lucky or something. I don't know what it is. So... I mean, I was never with a with a porn star penis like yes, eleven have. inches. I mean, I am, but not like. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying you actually, actually no. had sex with a porn star. Oh, I did. I did. I know. Oh, and you know what? I did have sex with a guy who was so long that he couldn't get it all in me. Only if it was anal, which we did try, and we did, we did it. Well, we didn't just try it. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's a way. You can get the whole thing. Oh, you know what? It was two people. I was, I was a not little... two at the same time. No, 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 no. Okay, because I was gonna say that's happened recently, but uh, yeah, there's two people. Yes, but he wasn't the longest. Phoebe's there had is... so much cock <laughs> that she can't remember all of the cocks that she's had. It was interesting when Ed and I got together and we're like, okay, how many partners have you had? Four. Crickets, crickets, crickets. <clears throat> Ed's like, are you still counting? Hold on. <laughs> crickets, crickets. Ed's like, uh, I can count on one hand. Like, really? Yeah, she, you know, see those clicker things when you go yeah. into the auditorium? Mm. She was like. <laughs> I'm like, I'll come back when you're done because. I, I, I don't, I didn't ever, I don't know. I just counting. thought I was normal. Maybe, maybe it was. The you were side extra of, special. It was the side effect of being Catholic girl for so long i don't know i had time i I had to make up for lost time Hmm? i said i thought all the girls had this much cock oh (laughs) okay smells yes this is what women are i think most self-conscious about when they've got a guy with his face face down there yes there's i'll tell you right now There's Mm. always a scent, Mm. not a smell, not a stink, a scent. Ooh, I like the way you said that. This is okay. Every woman has Mm -hmm. a particular bouquet to her. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's it's a strong, (laughs) delicious smell. Mm. Now, yes, yeah. there can be bad smells if it smells fishy or off, and you'll smell it because it's very strong. It only happens sometimes, and that's usually only when there's an infection, right? Yeah. You've got a yeast infection or you've got a UTI. Right. Other than that, yeah, there's always kind of a smell that you're going to smell, a scent. Or BV. Yeah, BV is the other one. Meh. But but that, th- we're talking about the exception. Those yeah. are 
infections. Right. There's there's right. a colony of bacteria that have right. decided to invade right. and conquer. And it makes sense because any infection in the body does have an odor. Right. I mean, you've cut yourself before or, you know, you've yeah. had something go on where there's yeah. an infection. It, 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 it has an odor. smell fresh, That's right? That's the byproduct of an infection. Yeah. Yeah. So the bacteria eat things and their gas that they give off has an odor to it. So it's not pleasant. Okay. That is not what we're talking about let's get off the bad odor totally (laughs) but i think a lot of women feel like that's what any smell is right like it shouldn't smell like something it shouldn't smell like anything it should be like roses laundry detergent that fresh scent Mm -hmm. that comes with the dryer sheets no it shouldn't (laughs) why because women smell and Lick your arm before you put, you know, body okay. spray on oh, it or something. Okay, right now. Skin has a taste to it. There's mm. there's something yummy about nibbling on somebody's mm. lips or their neck or their earlobes, right? Mm-hmm. And if you start spraying a bunch of Axe body spray on it, <laughs> it doesn't taste very good, does it, ladies? <laughs> so don't spray whatever the strippers put on that's like peaches and glitter. Yeah, that's nuts. It smells good when the strippers are doing it, but not when you're eating it. Yeah. So (laughs) don't try and cover it up. It's not a bad thing. There's always a little bit of this, like, moist, lovely, luscious, earthy yum smell. Oh, my God. Okay. Pew. Mm. Now that we're on the the Mm -hmm. smell, we're going to go through the rest of the senses. The other one is taste. Oh, my. So diet, hydration, medications, these can all affect your taste, right? Your flavor. Yeah. So if you eat things that are strong, you're going to taste strong. This happens with semen, Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the whole story about eating pineapple to sweeten semen think about what you eat if you drink four cups of coffee a day you're Mm. probably going to taste a little strong so think about hydrating which is good for you anyway Mm -hmm. and eating good cleansing things that that help with your hydration and your taste right And, and just as a note i love the taste of vagina just saying Always sticking your tongue in there. Every chance I can. All right. Vulva anatomy. You may have heard me mention the vulva earlier. It is the outer part of the female genitals. This includes the opening of the vagina or vestibule, the labia majora, majora, your outer lips, the labia minora, the inner lips, and the clitoris the monus pubis 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 yeah i never say that right it's latin i know know. you and your language maybe you ought to talk about this because this this is is all this is the part i like this is like your part so here's the thing Right, you don't just jump straight to the clit. You no. kind of gotta work up to it. Just yes. like we said before, it's sensitive. You've you've got to coax the kitty out, right? Ow. You can't just jump on the cat and start petting it. You gotta no. like, coax it out. Yeah. Be gentle. Yes. Offer it enticements. Mm-hmm. So like. spend time kissing down her body. Start at her neck. Her ears, her lips work down between her breasts, across her belly, (laughs) down her thighs. Then come back up and start working on the mound right above the vagina. Mm -hmm. So don't go straight to the pussy. (laughs) Work around the pussy. (laughs) 
You got it. You got it. You can't just go straight for the belly. You got to work around it. Yes. This warms her up. It gets her ready for more direct contact. Yes. This is the blood flow thing that I was talking about earlier. As a woman gets more excited, blood flows to her vagina, her vulva, the vulva, whole vulva, the whole thing, mm-hmm. the clitoris, the inner, the outer lips. Yep. They all start to fill up with blood. Why? Because they're getting ready for sex. Mm-hmm. So you got to excite her and get her primed. Plus, it's a tease. If you go straight to the vagina, you're not hinting to her that there's more to come. You've gone straight to the meal. Slow right. down and nibble around the edges <laughs> before you get to the meat in the middle. Mm. It's kind of like that dessert you get at a really fancy restaurant. I always... that. That drizzles the desserts in the center, and then they mm. drizzle all the chocolate or the raspberry right. stuff all over the plate in this nice decoration. What do I always do? Take my finger and I swipe the drizzle and I lick it. Mm. Why? Because it's freaking good. Right. And it's kind of like sticking your hand in the cookie dough or sticking your hand in the frosting. You want? I always want to taste what that tastes like first before I dig into the dessert. Exactly. For some reason, I don't know. I it's like an don't. appetizer. Yeah, it's like a precursor to what the dessert's going to taste like with everything all together. This way I get to taste a few little bits before I taste the whole thing. Oh, and, and just, guys, like all of the parts of a woman are delicious, so you just want to nibble on all of them. So don't start with the first thing that you're thinking of. <laughs> Work around it. Just slow down. You'll yeah. get there. Yeah. Let's talk about the labia majora. Mm. The outer lips. Start by licking and nibbling on her outer lips. We're not talking about biting, although some women are into that. Mm-hmm. Little nibbles, little licks outside what you're doing now is you are pulling more blood into the vulva, into that surrounding tissue, and priming her even more. It starts to lubricate her, mm-hmm. builds her excitement, primes her for more. Some women in, even enjoy a little pulling by sucking their lips into your mouth gently. Everything is gentle. Women are delicate flowers. Treat them as such. Don't go hard. This isn't rugby. (laughs) This is a ballet. You're going gently. Yes. Uh, Although they may want that later when you're smacking them with the... But don't give it to them up front. Right. Even if they want it hard. Women want their vulva like smacked, whipped, whipped or smacked with a, a paddle. There are women who are into that. Yes. And even those women probably appreciate a little bit of foreplay. <laughs> right. up to that. Yeah. I, I could would... imagine it's a little bit like. Yeah. Good morning. Whack. Right. Somebody hitting you in the face with a two by four. Yeah. No. All right. We've gone outer. Let's go inner. Inner. So we've worked the outside a little mm-hmm. bit. Now we're going to move into the labia minora, My the goodness. inner lips. You're getting closer, getting warmer. Mm-hmm. She's getting wetter. You're getting warmer. She's getting warmer. Mm-hmm. Spend some time licking up and down. So you're doing circuits around. Now, this isn't like round and round and round and round like don't get crazy don't be silly Hmm. it's just slow up and down strokes don't do what you see in the cheap porn or the high school movies where they're like up up down down left right left right yeah don't do that yeah just don't do that (laughs) 
stick <laughs> to being gentle and kind of painting it like your tongue is a paintbrush oh that's nice more like karate kid where it's wax on wax off (laughs) good one here's the trick use the flat part of your tongue so not the tip not the pointy part so if you stick your tongue out not the tip flicky part but the top part the part where you would lick an ice cream cone Oh, right? yes. Like you don't lick with the tip of your tongue on an ice cream cone, right? You do this like a dog lick, right? Yeah. Big, flat, broad, You know, I never flat tongue. thought of that. Like, why do we think we have to lick with the point of our tongue on a clitoris or That's vulva? like lemons. You lick lemons like that. I don't. Do we? Yeah, I guess you kind of do. You kind of like dip your tongue in. You're like, uh, oh, that's terrible. Right. But we already know vagina tastes good, so... So why not it? ice cream cone it? Mmm, just <laughs> eh, the whole tongue. Okay, so don't kiss her like this, but lick her like this, right? Because right. if, you, if you go up to your partner and you go, <laughs> eh, and you, you lick her full on, she's going to hopefully punch you in the face. <laughs> but if not, she's at least going to give you a funny look. <laughs> Slow, flat part of your tongue. Not mm, the tip. Mm. No tip. Not just the tip. <laughs> the whole tongue. The as whole much tongue, tongue eh, as you can get. The ice cream cone lick. Part of this is it's tickly. It's it's like a the finger tip. tip. Yeah, the tip. Yeah. Don't poke at something with a f- fingertip. You don't scratch at it. It's... It's more like the palm of your hand, right? Like if you want to pet a cat, Mm -hmm. use the palm of your hand. You don't use your fingertip and pet a cat. Your tongue (laughs) is like your hand. You're going to use the whole top of your tongue. Uh, I could just see myself trying to... That analogy is great because it's like, who in their right mind would like pet a cat with their fingertip? But apparently we lick clits with our tongue tips all the time and that's a thing so don't (laughs) do it use the whole top of your tongue oh my gosh that's great um that image is not going to leave my mind now petting a cat with your fingertip right you'd never do it clitoris let's talk about the clitoris a little bit down to the clitoris this is an interesting thing it never ages yeah so, Even as you age, it doesn't age. It's like one of the, it's either the only place or one of the only places that doesn't age. The tissue doesn't age. It's the fountain of youth. Yes, we found it. So get your face in there and drink from the fountain of youth. Because <laughs> it's never aging. <laughs> Heck, it's like, it's like an 18 year old right there. Yeah. In your mouth. Woohoo. And what's... Okay, this is a little weird. And this is going to totally turn off some guys. But with enough hormones, it can actually start to turn into a penis. Mm-hmm. So the, the erectile tissue in your penis and in the clitoris are actually the same biological thing. But most women are not taking that much testosterone to turn into men and so this isn't really a thing but just to know biologically we all start out the same in the womb Mm -hmm. and as we develop depending Mm -hmm. on whether you get more which chromosomes you have and testosterone and ooh, ooh, i have a question i have something to say yeah go for it i was raising my hand just so that everybody knew get ed's attention like i yes, need to work that hard to get ed's in class yeah she doesn't have to do anything to get my attention she has my attention all the time <laughs> so i read that the tissue even inside your nose is very similar to the tissue on your clitoris and penis hmm. in the sense that or 
or maybe it's that they're all I know is that they're connected somehow. So pay attention next time you're having sex. If you feel like one nostril gets stuffy or closed off, it has to do with sex. That tissue starts to respond to what's going on down between your legs. And yes. it will switch. And once I read that, I started to pay attention to it, and it's true. It happens to me, and it happens to Ed. Well, what's interesting is that the the neural pathways that run through your nose are connected to your pleasure sensors. So often, when I'm thinking really dirty thoughts, oh. I will sneeze. What? Yeah, it's a weird thing. Oh, but wow. There's something about the way that the nerves move. So, <laughs> oh my. All every time I'm sneezing, I'm thinking dirty thoughts. Oh my. So that whole thing about oh, it's the sun making me sneeze. That's oh, just no. bullshit. Yeah. No, no, that's true too, but that's a totally different thing. <laughs> that's because the <laughs> optical nerves and the olfactory nerves are st- close enough where they misfire yes that's a that's a thing that does happen it to does me happen. Too. there's actually a condition f- yeah a name for that condition i don't remember what yeah. it is but we are getting way off way track. off track but but nerves are yes. funny things yes the clitoris can grow as much as two and a half times bigger as you age so as you get older it continues to grow hmm Here's another fun fact. The sole purpose of the clitoris is pleasure. There's nothing else like it on the body. That's pretty cool. Which yeah. is why all these horrible people do mutilations. Things. Yeah. Because yeah. it's terrible because control. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So even the the head of the penis has kind of like two purposes. One, it it directs things, right? Like it's it's Injecting. the downspout, <laughs> right? For things to leave, repopulating, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's got a hole in it that does something, but the clitoris doesn't have a hole. Women do not pee out of it. If you don't know that, you do now. <laughs> pee does not come out of the clitoris. It comes no. out of the urethra, which is below the clitoris and above the vaginal opening all right wait what's the second thing for the penis see if you know it you said the penis has two functions the head the head oh well peeing and ejaculate oh i was just wasn't gonna go to the pee thing oh okay i was i was gonna go to the to the coronal ring and the frenulum. Frenulum. It's, it's designed to... Do that thing with your hand again? Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? It did look like I was... Uh-huh. You were. Masturbating you, huh? Uh-huh. I, I felt it. <laughs> From way over here, I felt it. <laughs> but the shape of your head is designed to pull out competing sperm. Yes. We learned that at the Sex Museum in New York. Yes. Very fun. Great. You should get a chance. Go there. When you're outside in the real world again and you can go to New York and travel and anyway. Mm -hmm. Clitoris is very sensitive. For most women, there are 8,000 nerve endings, double that of a penis so you know how sensitive your penis is guys women's clitoris is twice as sensitive good god and it's too sensitive at first which is why you don't go poking it with your fingertip (laughs) don't pet the cat with your fingertip use the palm (laughs) other women like their clits really worked over but yeah Yeah, go slow Listen to what she wants. Yep. And even a woman who wants it hard and fast isn't going to turn down a nice, slow 
warm up. Right. And if she wants it faster, she's going to tell you. She's like, beat that shit. Right. Work it. Work it. Work it. But going slow, always a good first move. Yes. Okay. Here's the mind blowing part, and oh this is my gosh. now we're getting now we're gonna go deep into the clitoris. Oh my goodness! Deep into the vulva. Newsflash: It's not just that little tip, pointy thing. So that little bump that sticks out—that's not the oh, only part of right. the clitoris. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go, go Google this. After you Google your partner, Google this. After you Google your partner? Yeah, it always sounds dirty when you say, go Google this. Oh, you Googled me. Oh. Right? Like, that sounds dirty. Does it? Oh. It does. (laughs) You can Google me later. So, look up, as I bust Phoebe up, (laughs) do a search for clitoris legs on the internet. This is a podcast. This is an auditory thing. So it's going to be hard for me to describe it to you, but I'm going to do my best. The clitoris actually has bulbs or legs that travel down along behind the labia minora and majora. So I, I did it. I broke Phoebe. Oh, God. You know, when you have it a, had a really stressful day or week or month or year because of COVID, and somebody just says something or they look at you just off and you just lose it and you get the giggles and you can't ever come back, uh, that's what happened. Okay, I think I'm fine now. Deep breath. So... <laughs> The best way to describe it is think of the clitoris as your penis and that your legs kind of come (laughs) down from your hips, right? Well, a woman's clitoris kind of works the same way. They call them legs because they travel down. So think of these things as these meaty bundles of nerves that run around the opening of the vagina. So... Mm -hmm. Penetrative sex does stimulate the opening, that outer rim. Right. And in a sense, it is stimulating the clit because those legs are being stimulated as you rub over them, as you Mm -hmm. penetrate. Mm -hmm. That's why some women orgasm with vaginal sex, penetrative sex, because their clitoral legs are more sensitive then the clit, well, it could be just as sensitive as the clitoral tip, the head. But the point is that they're more sensitive to that kind of stimulation. Right. So your mileage will vary. Different women are stimulated in different ways. And so Mm -hmm. don't just focus on the top. That's why licking around kind of warms things up. So think Mm -hmm. of it as... A nice protected clitoris it's buried inside of some of her labial flesh as well as the the underlying skin and tissue so it's not quite as sensitive but when you lick up and down you're still stimulating all of those nerves huh. mm. goodness which is why <sighs> you need to spend time exploring around the vulva not just attacking the clit so this isn't a tiny target turns out it's a big target it's a big target you can spend all day down there yeah can't lose communication this is the one time where you should ask for directions right your guy, your girl, whoever you are. How do you like en- it? Wanting to enjoy some oral pleasure. Ask. Subtle clues or outright instructions are great. Um, her reactions to what you're doing is 
is key. If your partner is pushing into you, thrusting her hips, grabbing your arm, wiggling around, it probably feels good. Although some wiggling could be like not good, but typically well, the, it's good. Typically it's the pelvis trying to tip down and pull away versus tip up, tip up into and push into your correct. face. Yeah. If I don't like something, I'm tipping down and trying to get away. <laughs> get away, get away, get away. Get away, run away. Too much. Too intense. Yes. So why pulling away is too intense, you should probably slow down, ease off a bit. And it's it's part of the challenge to listen and to learn, you know, what your partner wants and needs. All of those life coaches talking about being a good listener <laughs> this is part of being a good listener <laughs> verbal and nonverbal communication listen and women feel okay with telling him more of that less of this right there do it yes your enthusiasm also is a communicating factor tool to her also right him, her her him if you like it she'll like it if you're excited we talk about this all the time enthusiasm is sexy if you really like eating pussy that's pretty hot and she's gonna like that right positions what do we got we got some fun positions yeah we so there's the traditional missionary mm -hmm. right Lying She's your back. Lying backwards. You are down there between her legs, hands on her thighs, hand on her belly, underneath her butt. There's a variety of hand positions at this point. <laughs> but Can I get a foot rub in there or something? <laughs> I think that's one of them, but. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> Bottoms up. Pillow under her hips. Ed in the back. Phoebe as a toy or a hand or nothing and you can kind of grind against the pillow or towel. Yeah, so this is kind of the the doggy style of mm -hmm. oral sex. So if you, she can get her hips tipped up, you can kind of crack her open like a peach. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. And just <laughs> get all of the juice. Oh my. My goodness. Sidewinder, Phoebe's favorite. I was going to talk about that earlier when you're talking about nibbling on the mm -hmm. labia minora. It's where your partner is perpendicular with one leg bent over the other partner and the other leg is straight. And so your lips and lips base, your lips and her lips match mash up or match up kind of like mash up right this is kind of the the side by side 69 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, right but she has no access to your parts right yeah face sitting one of my favorites yes so particular favorite you lay straight on the bed have a good headboard something with handholds <laughs> ours has handholds and it's bolted <laughs> very securely bolted <laughs> talking like grade eight bolts yes because <laughs> once she starts rocking and she can control the pressure she can co control the direction and in a sense she's using your face as a toy yeah and it's great Put your tongue out there, nice and flat. Sometimes you can get a finger in there as well, but she's riding and rocking her hips. I love it because it's it's very impassioned. Yes. And as a side note, our headboard is not attached to the bed. <laughs> so if you remove the bed, the headboard is just stuck to the wall. <laughs> I had to make sure that thing was bolted down because 
<laughs> you know. And it has little finger holds, like, so I, I can get my fingers behind it so that... Well, you've you got know. multiple handles. Well, that's true. All over it. Yes. It's like, it's but, like Jungle Gym. Yes, but, cl- and cleverly disguised. It, like, it, it doesn't... It looks like a normal headboard. Yes. You wouldn't know no. that it was a sex toy. No, you wouldn't know. Mm-mm. Except for maybe the glowing lights behind it. That's, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Yes. <laughs> Sexy time. Commanding. Another position that I love where Ed is on his knees with his face between my legs. Yeah. So she's standing in front of me. And mm-hmm. I've got my hands on her buttocks squeezing and pressing her vagina into my mouth and it's fabulous now phoebe likes it because she likes coming while standing up yeah i just like eating pussy so i'll take it any way i can get it (laughs) i love it because i can move more freely and i really like being able to look down it's easier to look down when you're standing than to you know pull your head up you don't have the weight yeah, and you know, as strong as your abs and your core are, it's like you're you're also trying to relax, mm, and but right. now you're doing a crunch, so it's like it's this battle. So you don't run. <laughs> so planks are not good for sex. E- no. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I mean, they are, but but not while you're doing sex. No. Okay. Although right. you are pretty much in a plank every time you're on top. Yeah, that's, like I said, I'll take it any way I can get it. (laughs) Stacked flapjack, front to back. Phoebe's back, I'm, what? What is this, Ed? Yeah, so this is a fun position. If you haven't tried this, try this. So, guy, lay down on the bed Uh and have your woman... (laughs) Kind of like an inverted 69. So it would be 69 if she flipped over onto her belly, flip her onto her back. And Mm. then it's it's basically she's riding your face, but she's laying back across your chest, stomach, and legs. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun because she's laying there and she can grab your ankles and hold on to you. And you get to, like, lean forward and eat her out. And for those who are into it, you could also eat ass that way at the same time. So there is that. Yeah, there is that. Oh, my. Let's talk about some techniques, some specific techniques. First, everyone should be relaxed and comfortable, as Phoebe said, trying to do a crunch or a plank while you're doing all this stuff it's not comfortable you're not relaxed being tense will not work you cannot orgasm if you are under stress no not under stress but sometimes tensing your body well a lot of times tensing my body helps me orgasm well muscular tension is different than psychological tension or discomfort so squeezing Mm -hmm. those kegel exercises etc those are good Mm -hmm. we're not talking about that kind of Mm -hmm. tense gotcha we're talking about like being tense teetering on a thing i mean what if you're like tense and you just need a release well yeah but you still gotta kind of if you're anxious like relax about it before an interview i'm anxious i'm nervous i'm I guess you could kind of say it's tense, and I would always... you got to relax at some point to orgasm. Well, yeah, but it kind of helps me relax, so I don't know. Well, try it. Maybe you, you'll have tense to experiment. is good. Write us and tell us about your tense orgasm experiences. Intense. Well, there's that, too. Yeah. We'd love to hear about intense orgasms as well. Oh, yes. Start... Slow and gentle and way above the vagina. Kissing, touching, squeezing her body. With ladies, there's foreplay to the foreplay. 
get her excited, then work your way down town. <laughs> Pace. There's something kind of like the previous one where we were talking about an intensity in a building. It's a crescendo. This is kind of like you're back in band and you got to build up to the crescendo. You have to keep up a pace that you can maintain for a while. Fun fact, it can take 20 to 45 minutes for some ladies. So that 15 minute orgasm that you have will take her 20 to 45 minutes. <laughs> ladies are a little slower. You got to work through them. So pick a position Pick a technique that you can maintain for a while because you're going to be there for a while. We like to take our time. It's good. Build up speed and pressure when she asks for it or when you can sense her excitement rising. She grabs your head. She's grabbing the bed sheets. She's making noises. Whatever those are. I really like when they grab my head and pull on me. Oh, That's didn't. very nice. I, I do it, but I didn't know you really liked it. Oh, I like it. Oh. Make mm. me eat you. Oh. Oh. Flat, slow strokes with the tongue. Remember, don't be a poker. <laughs> More like licking an ice cream cone. Got it. Don't focus on the clit too much at first lick around her pussy nibble her lips slowly enter her vagina with your tongue don't jab it in there just like don't jam your dick in there go slow <laughs> gotta rub it around a little bit make sure the juices are going oh i like when you do that then start outside first then inside and clit you can bring in backup, folks. Oh. Use your fingers. Mm. Use your fingers gently in a come-hither motion as this mm. stimulates her G-spot. This is my favorite. You can use toys as well, her favorite toy, and then you can focus on licking around the toy, licking around her vagina and her clitoris. Mm-hmm. Mm. Play, experiment, try new things after you're both comfortable. Ask her what she likes. She may already have her favorite flavor of ice cream. So have her tell you. Mm -hmm. mm. My goodness. I know. Gives me all kinds of ideas. Oh my. You might as well continue because this is your episode. I think someone's thinking about dessert later. <laughs> In closing, remember, this is all supposed to be fun for everyone. So have a good time. Relax. Enjoy. She should be ready to relax and let you pleasure her. So go have some fun. I'm so relaxed. I haven't even touched you yet. I know. My God. Yet. Let's go. All right. Before you turn off our podcast to take care of all the vanilla things pulling you away, please reach out and give us a review. I am the first to admit that it's much easier to give a five-star rating, which we appreciate. But if you could take 43 seconds to type a review, we would love it. If you want to share a personal story, ask us questions, or share your comments, you can contact us at swingeruniversity at gmail.com. Check us out at swingeruniversity.com, where you can find links to our Twitter and Instagram feeds. Thank you so much for listening to Swinger University, your horizontal enrichment podcast. Mm -hmm.